So in this problem we have a monkey operating a rocket car with both forward and reverse rockets. So at first he turns on the forward rocket so that he and the car accelerate at 15 meters per second squared and does that while they travel 200 meters and then switches it, turns off the forward rocket, immediately turns on the reverse rocket so the acceleration reverses at uh, minus 10 meters per second squared, so back. And the question simply, what's the maximum velocity the car gets to and how far does the car go? All right, so let's see. Even though it doesn't ask us to plot the problem or to draw the graphs, you should always draw the graphs. You should lay out the problem, draw the graphs, and find the important, important time points where things happen. So it's actually easier in this case to start with the acceleration graph, not with the position graph. So let's see, forward at 15 meters per second squared. So I'm going to put a 15 up here, and it was a constant acceleration, so 15 meters per second squared for a while. For 200 meters, we don't really know that on this axis, this is time, right? So for now we'll just say that it happens at t star, and then the acceleration immediately switches to minus 10. And then apparently stays at minus 10 for the rest of the problem, however long it takes. So we could call that uh, t star that time. Maybe we'll need it, maybe we won't. But let's go ahead and say this was an important time. So let's do sort of a dotted line going all the way up. Oops, <laughs> a straight dotted line. Okay, now let's do velocity. So assuming it started from rest, forgot to say that in the problem, at a constant positive acceleration, the velocity will increase, so like this, uniformly. And then it switches to a negative acceleration, so the velocity will decrease uniformly, but also with a, a lower slope. Right, so this was 15, this was 10, so I would draw this one kind of coming out like that, where the slope is clearly lower, like that. Now we have a second important time point. We have the point where the velocity eventually goes negative. So here it was moving forward and speeding up, and after this point, when it starts to decelerate, it's still moving forward. It still has a forward velocity, but eventually it slows down so much that the car does eventually start to come back. So that also is an important time point that I'm going to denote with a dotted line. Because now we're ready to draw our position, what we think the position is going to look like. Well, when something is accelerating, you know that you get kind of a parabola. It kind of goes as t squared. So that would kind of look like this, faster, faster, faster. All right. And then what happens here is it's going down. It's a parabola the other way. It's a slowing down parabola. But the main thing you got to match is right here. The slope should be the same right there. So you're actually drawing kind of an inflection point. It kind of looks like this. And then the only thing I know in terms of how a uh, curve to make it is that it needs to be flat when I get here. Because what was that point? That's where the velocity is zero. All right, so you can see the slope is getting smaller, 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 smaller. Velocity is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. It hits zero there. My slope should hit zero there, which it pretty much does. There you go. So that is a well-drawn position. Thank you very much. Velocity acceleration graphs. You weren't asked for them but you'll see how they help you answer the questions if you take the time to do them. Let's see, so what are the A maximum velocity? Okay, the maximum velocity occurs here. And we know that's the case from the wording of the problem, but if it accelerates forward, it's, the velocity is getting bigger, bigger, bigger. As soon as it starts to decelerate, the velocity should go down. And of course, that's what we plotted there. So let's figure that one out. This looks like it's all about acceleration for a certain distance, right? So we would use our equation v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. And we know that we accelerated for a distance, a displacement of 200 meters, so what we're looking for, v final squared, the v initial squared was 0, started from rest, plus 2 times 15 meters per second squared times uh, it was 200 meters. So this makes 30, this makes 6,000, but then we take the square root because it's vf squared, and that's 77.5. vf is 77.5 meters per second. That's how fast things got, and then it started to slow down. And you can see how quick that was using our combined derived formula there. Now for part b, 
what was the maximum displacement? Okay, that did not occur here. Keep in mind, even after this point, once you started to decelerate, you're still moving forward, you still have a positive velocity, so displacement is still increasing. The displacement will stop increasing as soon as the velocity reaches zero. And if you think about it, we're moving forward, moving forward, slowing down. It's when the velocity goes through zero that the displacement hits a maximum. And we know that is here. So what we really need is the displacement from here to here. And then we'll add this one in from there to there. The displacement from here to here is really, again, it's acceleration for a constant displacement. And we care about the displacement. So we're going to use this again. The v, uh, final squared is the initial squared plus 2a delta x. And we can use it again because in complicated kinematics equations, we break this problem into chunks. Right? So we're going to redefine where x, i, and xf are. We're going to redefine where t initial and t final are, even though we're not using t here. So for this part of the problem, let's look uh, the final velocity. Well, we decided the whole point is when it gets to zero. So zero squared is zero. The initial velocity, it started at, well, we calculated that last time, 77.5 squared. Plus two, what was the acceleration? Minus 10. And then delta x. In this case, the d, the, the delta x, the displacement, is what we're looking for. So you square that, and it's actually 6,000 again like you had before, and you divide, uh, bring it over here, and then it's all, everything's positive, and you divide by 20, and you get the delta x for this part is 300 meters. Right? But that's not the answer. What did it ask for? It asked for the maximum displacement for the whole problem. Remember, that is for this part. This is 300 meters from here to there, but we also have to add in the 200 meters from there to there. It went 200 and then it went 300. So the real answer, the maximum displacement is 500 meters. So two steps, both done with our acceleration for constant, constant acceleration for a displacement.